I remind myself and my brothers and sisters of a promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made to us in the Quran. Because in these times, we go through some hardships as a community, as an ummah. We look at the news, we see what's going on in Syria, in Kashmir. We see what's going on right here at home in America. We see these things and we forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is above all of this. We forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise to us. And this is in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has made it a responsibility, a haq upon Himself to give nusra, to give support to the believers. That's a right that is due upon Allah. But what is upon us is to be a mu'min. You gotta be a true believer, you gotta have iman. And I want to remind us of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us throughout history against all odds, Allah gave that help to the believers. When Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam was in the fire, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to the fire? Qulna, ya naru kunu bardawun wa salama ala Ibrahim. O oh fire, be cool and peaceful. Be at peace upon Ibrahim. Allah SWT didn't just say be cool upon Ibrahim because cold can be harmful. A cool that will bring peace to Ibrahim. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet of our Ummah. Imagine you are in a hostile environment in Mecca and all of those Quraysh, the enemies have founded your house and they are there to kill you. You've got nobody to help you. It's late, it's night, it's their city, it's their territory. A person from each tribe, they all come. Imagine that. We think we're going through hardships now. Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu at that time. What did he say? Husband Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. Tawakkul, reliance upon Allah. He walked from the middle of them. History is a witness. He walked from the middle of them. They couldn't see Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us in the battle of Qadisiyah. Read up your history brothers and sisters. Historic documentation, not just from Muslim sources. We presented Persian non-Muslim sources that documented that Sa'd bin Waqas and the Sahaba, they walked on water. Their horses rode on water. Miraculously, they weren't prophets, but they were mu'mineen. They had the nusrah, they had the help of Allah with them. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, one of the great uh, imma and scholars of Islam, after the time of the Sahaba, he went through what's called the mihna, a trial. People try to say the Quran was makhluq. He said, no, this is the kalam of Allah. This is the words of Allah, ghair makhluq. They put him on trial. They whipped him. Historic documentation, look it up. They were whipping him. He was wearing the izar, the loincloth. It's tied. When they whipped him, it started to loosen. He was afraid his aura would get exposed. He made dua to Allah. Two hands came out of the ground, held his izar. These aren't stories. Look up Ibn Jawzi's book, Manaqib Ibn Ahmad or al Dhahabi. Look up Siyar Alam al Nubala. These are mu'mineen. Allah gave Nusra to them. But this khutbah is not about history. I want to talk about the past, but I also want to talk about the present. We were out at Balboa Park doing some da'wah, calling people towards Allah. And somebody came up to me and they told me, how come you don't apologize for September 11th and for ISIS and for all this terrorism? I want you to apologize. So I told him that I will apologize. I got no problem with that. Right after you apologize to me for the 200 million Africans that were taken from Africa, the majority of which died, were killed on the way here. Why don't you apologize for that? I never got an apology. Why don't you apologize for being the only nation to ever drop a nuclear bomb on another nation? Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you think I forgot? You think my memory is that short? You think I'm a goldfish? Why don't you apologize for those Japanese that were killed in those nuclear attacks? Why doesn't Mr. Trump, as his real name is, why doesn't he apologize for his ancestors from Germany? As far as I know, and some of you may know history better than me, there have been two world wars, right? Which one did the Muslims begin? Wait, none of them. Who started each world war? Wasn't us. Who did the Holocaust? Wasn't us. What is the apology for that? What is the apology for every innocent child that dies in a drone attack? What is the apology for that? When we want to talk about apologies, I'll expect an apology from Mr. Trump for his grandfather, a member of the KKK, as has been well documented. Google it, pictures there. So don't ask us for an apology. And if Mr. Trump wants to put a Muslim ban. And I will restore my travel ban to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. He wants to ban Muslims. We will tell him, this isn't your country to ban. This is the land of Allah. As every land is the land of Allah. And there are Muslims here that are gonna be here. And if you don't like it, I would suggest he goes somewhere else. But I don't know where he's gonna go. If he goes back to Europe, a lot of Muslims in Europe, 
You go to Africa, you go to South America, you go to China, you go to Malaysia, you go to Japan, you go to the Antarctic, there's Muslims. So I would make a suggestion, if he wants to go somewhere where there is no Muslims, I suggest he goes to hell. Because in hell, a time will come that there will be no Muslims. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us with this religion. Don't think that the news is depressing. Understand that the reality is that Islam is growing. Islam is growing everywhere. And know that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us the glad tidings that this religion of Islam will enter every household. You see these hijab bands in France, you see these bands and minarets in Switzerland. This is only because they know that Islam is the future. And there is no doubt because the Prophet ﷺ told us that. This is the plan of Allah and Allah will complete His plan no matter what they do. Know this. Alhamdulillah, the Muslims in America, the Muslims in Europe, the Muslims around the world, they're growing. Alhamdulillah, the masajid are growing. Alhamdulillah, people's awareness of Islam is growing. And it will continue to do so no matter what they do. What is the question at hand? Is it that will the Muslims be victorious? No. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, The end will be for the people of taqwa. The victory, the end, the net result, we already know who's going to win this game. If it was halal to bet, I'd bet, but it's not. That is a guarantee. The question at hand is, will we be from those who are instrumental, who are the means of the spread of this beautiful religion or not? Are we going to stand by the sidelines and watch and complain and sit around cursing at our TVs, talking about Fox and this and that? Or are we going to be active in our community? Are we going to be active in da'wah? Are we going to be active in representing Islam? Because Islam is not a spectator sport. It's not something you do on the weekend, I'm letting you know. It's not something you can turn on in the mosque and turn off outside. You can't be two people. You have to be the same person here as you're going to be in the university, as you're going to be at your workplace, as you're going to be in the marketplace. If you're a Muslim here, you have to be Muslim there. Otherwise, we can pass out all the flyers you want, but it ain't going to work. If you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. So that's the question at hand. Are we going to be from those that Allah gives Nusrat? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahih hadith, he told us that there will be ta'ifa, a group from this ummah who will be victorious and those that try to overcome them will not be able to till the day of judgment. This ummah will never finish. Know this, this ummah will never finish until the day of judgment. When this ummah finishes, the day of judgment begins. And there'll be a group from this ummah that will be victorious mentally, physically, and they will not be able to be overpowered until the day of judgment. The companions, they ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is this group? What race, what tribe, what characteristics? No, none of that. The Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith, he told him this will be those that are upon what me and my companions are upon. The salaf of this ummah, the best generation. What the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and what the sahaba anhum, the Islam that they knew understood works everywhere. It's not about talking about riding a camel or something like this. No, nobody said riding a camel has got any reward in it. That's something that was there at the time. But the aqidah, the belief, the pure belief that they had, the fiqh, the understanding of the Qur'an, the tafsir that they had, this is what we need to bring into our life. And then we need to convey, bring that to the larger community. We want this Islam to spread and the justice and peace of Islam to reach every household. And it will. But we want to be the means for that. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that become the means for that.